Good morning, everyone. Please welcome Docker CEO Scott Johnston. Hey! Hello, Docker developer community. Welcome to DockerCon 2023. Now, the last three years during COVID and all, uh, DockerCon was 100% virtual, and those were fantastic DockerCons. But we're so excited this year that we now have virtual and live online. So wherever you are, however you're joining us today, thank you. We're so glad you're here. Now, DockerCon is a celebration of developers, for developers, by developers. And it takes a village to pull this off. And so I want to do a round of thank yous to all those that came together to help make this happen. First off, of course, our community. We cannot, we would not exist without the Docker community. Thank you. Of course, our customers. Let's give it up for the Docker customers. More than 79,000 Docker customers. Our Docker partners that together work to give you a fantastic developer experience. Give it up for our partners as well. And finally, our Docker team, who behind the scenes have worked for months to make this happen. I'm going to embarrass some folks now. So Andy, Tamara, Cannon, if you and your teams could stand up and wave your hands, could you give it up for these folks? They are making it happen today. Thank you. Last, certainly not least, we want to thank our sponsors. And sponsors support DockerCon in so many ways, with talks and breakouts and food and financial support. And so please give it up for our sponsors of DockerCon. Now, hard to believe, but Docker was open source 10 years ago in 2013. And so DockerCon 2023 celebrates 10 years during which we completely changed the world of software. Let's take a look at how we together changed how development teams build, share, and run modern applications. So for build, copy on write, union file systems, content addressability, immutable images, made builds reproducible, which was unheard of before Docker. With share, we standardized the image format and the wire protocol, so that with a simple Docker push, Docker pull, a developer could share team member to team member, server to server, cloud to cloud, and on and on and on. And finally, run, we abstracted away the complexities of C groups and namespaces in the Linux kernel to make taking advantage of powerful isolation and security properties as simple as Docker run or Docker compose up. And now we can run those same container images on any laptop, any server, any cloud service, any architecture, any IoT device, on and on and on. And so the takeaway from Build, Share, Run, if we stand back, simplifying powerful technologies to make them accessible to tens of millions of developers has proven to be, in the last 10 years, a catalyst for developer innovation and creativity. And let's see how that's resulted in growth in our community. If we look at just some simple stats, in the last 10 years, we've grown to more than 15 million developers across the globe. And you all collectively, just on Docker Hub alone, have created and shared more than 15 million repos across open source, commercial, and many other communities. Now, with your code, with your apps, with your Docker files, your Docker Compose files, tweets, blog posts, YouTube videos, in introducing your colleagues to Docker, you have made it clear that Docker is the way to build, share, and run any application anywhere. Now, for most developers in our community, your experience with Docker starts with Docker Desktop. It contains all the container lifecycle tools you need for that inner loop development, the code, build, test, debug loop. And regardless of Windows, Mac, or Linux, Docker Desktop gives you the same great developer experience, regardless of laptop, regardless of platform. And thanks to the support of our more than 79,000 customers, we've continued to add value to Docker Desktop. So let's take a quick look. First off, Docker Desktop integrates the open source technologies developers need to build modern apps on Windows and Mac hosts. That includes the Docker Engine, Docker Cly, Kubernetes, Docker Compose, BuildKit, and many other open source tech. 
And what that results is that devs can build containerized Linux apps on Windows and Mac without worrying about the VM and the file system and the networking and all the setup. You can just get to work and start to code. And we actively maintain this stack, and we release at least monthly so you're getting the latest upstream functionality, the latest bug fixes, and the latest remediations. Now, developers using Docker Desktop report releasing more than 13 times more frequently than without it. And so we continue to invest in functionality in desktop so you can go even faster. Just a couple simple examples over the last 12 months. Our Docker extensions community, Docker extensions being a way that third parties can extend the functionality of Docker Desktop securely, that we have now more than 700 partners, commercial and open source, shipping Docker extensions available on Hub and in the desktop itself. WebAssembly, last year we launched web support for WASM, WebAssembly, uh, a new very exciting uh, artifact format that's smaller and more secure than other formats. And we now have more than 4,500 developers building WASM applications, sharing them to Hub, and they're being downloaded or pulled from Hub to the tune of about 250,000 times a month. This last year we introduced Global Search, which on a simple command inside Docker Desktop, you can search for Docker files and images and plugins and extensions and documentation, whether local or in the cloud. And finally, this last year, we introduced Docker init, which automatically detects the programming language of your project and then automatically generates the Docker files, the Docker compose file, and the Docker ignore files. So you can just get to work coding and not have to worry about setup. Now, in addition to functional improvements and functional acceleration, we've worked really hard on just the raw speed of Docker Desktop. And just in the last year alone, we've doubled the host file sharing performance. We reduced startup time by four times, so now it starts in under four seconds. And we've reduced memory consumption by more than 10 times, all in the spirit of helping Docker Desktop help you go as fast as you can code. All in all, in the last 12 months, we've shipped more than 14,000 features, fixtures, and updates into Docker Desktop. All right, but enough talking about Docker Desktop. Let's see how actual developers use Docker Desktop in their development workflow. I'm really excited to welcome to the stage Bianca and Steve from, automotive, from, from car automation company Cruise. Bianca, Steve, welcome. How y'all doing? So my name's Stephen Day, and this is my colleague Bianca, and uh, we're from Cruise, and we're going to tell you a little bit about how we use Docker. Uh, so Cruise is a self-driving car company. Um, we've been um, in, uh, uh, we released public ride hail in uh, 2022, and we've been scaling out in uh, San Francisco, Phoenix, and Austin. So Docker is pretty important to our workflow. Um, we use it in. Uh, uh, you know, in, in large scale, we have uh, about uh, 2,000 repositories with Docker files and over 500 uh, Docker desktop users internally. And there's lots of other interesting numbers as you peruse through this slide on how we use Docker. Uh, we use it quite a bit. Um, it lets us stay focused on the problems that we, we have in AV. Um, uh, building an AV is, uh, is a combination of a lot of disciplines, um, uh, anything from hardware to mobile apps. And we have 1,400 developers to kind of uh, in, in several languages and need to cover all of these use cases. Um, uh, we use it across uh, development, testing, and production. Uh, you know, local development, end-to-end, -end, load testing, um, and uh, deployed tooling, as well as AI and ML training jobs. Uh, we use a very typical Docker workflow. Uh, you know, Docker files go into Docker Compose, and uh, we use that to power continuous integration and end-to-end -end testing. Uh, so we're going to show you a little bit of de uh, demo uh, that Bianca is going to take you through now. Thank you, Stephen. All right, so let's go through a real typical, very common workflow that we have at Cruise. So this is Juno. Juno is a self-service web application that our devs use internally to provision namespaces and clusters, to manage RBAC permissions, and to deploy applications, and a lot more, as you can see. So it integrates with a lot of things, like our identity um, management platform, Vault, GCP, GitHub Terraform Enterprise, and of course, Kubernetes on our pads. So as a developer, what I want to be able to do is work on Juno 
right away as quickly as possible locally, right? So how do I do that? Especially as somebody that may not be familiar with the Geno stack. So let's play the video. <laughs> So this is Poppy. It's an internal tool that we created that can get us up and running with the code base quickly. It'll clone the repository, and in a minute, you'll, or in a second, you'll see VS Code just pop up. So we know that with Juno, that we would need to simulate our infrastructure. That means Kubernetes with etcd and our CRDs. We would need a database and some sort of front end as a minimum. So what is like the easiest, fastest way to do that? Well. You can probably guess it's Docker Compose. This is the Compose file for Juno. And you can see it's pretty simple, um, relatively simple, despite the amount of functionality that Juno actually provides. So we have Redis, because everybody loves Redis. We have our database. We have Kubernetes in the form of etcd and our API server, and our CRDs. And actually, I make a modification here because I was trying to mitigate an error I saw earlier and see if it will still work, and our front end. So I'm going to run make compose up. And make compose up is literally just an alias over docker compose up build. We build. OK. So our containers are now going to spin up. And this is running locally on my laptop, but the beauty of Docker is that it can run anywhere by anyone. All right. So you can see the application spun up pretty successfully. And again, if I was a developer that um, I don't know the stack, I use Docker Desktop immediately, the dashboard, to be able to see what's going on, what the overview is. You can see all the containers that spun up, their statuses, what ports they're using. And I can take a look at logs really quickly, too. And the error I was seeing earlier is no longer there, so that's good. And we could do like a lot of other common things, like we could click, or we could look at the ports that are exposed and click around to it really quickly and conveniently. Yeah, we could look at inspect, bind mounts, exec, file tree, and of course this stuff you could always use the CLI for. But if I was new to the stack or even Docker, this is like the most convenient and most user friendly way to look around and explore and see what's going on. And this is a pattern we use at Cruise pretty, um, for most, if not all, of our applications. And it's how we use a mix of our internal tools, Docker Compose, and Docker Desktop to create a powerful local development experience, no matter how complex or simple your setup is. Thank you. Back to Steven. All right, thanks, Bianca. Um, yeah, so just kind of summarizing up why Docker. I mean, it, it's all about versatility in different applications. Um, with all of our disciplines that we practice at, at Cruise, um, Docker's a really important part about, uh, of that. Reproducible environments is another key part of this, where uh, you know, we're, we know that when we're, ru when we're uh, running it in each environment, we know that we're getting the same thing. And, and really, it's an industry standard. And Docker and Docker Desktop are a part of that. Developers are familiar with Docker files. The Docker tooling is easy to use. And it's extremely additive to our enterprise tool set. And it, it integrates with our workflow. All right, thank you. Awesome job, man. Awesome job. Awesome job, Bianca. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Steve. Now, after Docker Desktop, developers quickly discover Docker Hub. It's the Docker community's marketplace of open source and commercial content that includes tools, images, extensions, plugins, and much more. Many of these also have support for multiple architectures, whether that's x86, ARM, even mainframe, RISC-V. And we see also, with Linux containers, we see tons and tons of Windows containers. Also, serverless functions, WASM artifacts, and much, much more. Basically, Docker Hub has everything a development team needs to get started on their project. Let's double click on this for just a moment. Now, first up, we work closely with hundreds of partners, both upstream open source as well as commercial ISVs, to together create a broad and deep library of trusted content. And together with these tar partners, we make sure each one of these is actively maintained so it has the latest functionality, the latest bug fixes, the latest remediations. And in the case of Docker official images, None of those are older than 30 days. They're always fresh with the latest and greatest. 
Next, we work very closely with other partners in the software supply chain to ensure development teams have the trusted content they need where they need it, whether that's in the cloud or on-prem. And finally, the, the growth in the Docker developer community has driven growth in Docker Hub activity and content to the tune of more than 40% year-over-year growth. And this has been stressing us out for the last 12 months. And so all props and kudos to the Docker Hub engineering team and the Docker engineering platform team. In the last 12 months, they completely rewrote Docker Hub from Python 2.7 to Go to make it screaming fast to keep up with all the growth that we're seeing in the community. So let's check out where we are today. Check this out. We now have more than 57 petabytes of container images under management on Docker Hub, being accessed by more than 20 million monthly active IPs who are hitting that content on average 30,000 times every second. So could you please give it up for the Docker Hub engineering team and the Docker engineering platform team? <laughs> what a fantastic job. You're saving our bacon. You guys are saving our bacon is what you're doing. So there's another guest that's going to come up. I'm really excited to have them. Before we do, I do want to um, talk a bit about um, just the fantastic Cambrian explosion of creativity, innovation we see on Hub. We've talked about how abstractions simplify powerful tech. And in that simplification, it makes it more accessible to millions of devs. And that unleashes creativity. You see this on Hub all the time. And so I'm just going to give you a handful of examples. It's by no means exhaustive. But, but, but check this out. Um, just This is kind of meme of the moment, right? Uh, large language models. As these have been open sourced in the last 12 months, we've seen developers in our community download the open source, build a container image, and then train, tune, optimize that model, and then reshare it through Hub to their own developer community as an OCI Docker container image. And so you've got llamas, alpacas, and whales all up on Docker Hub. Um, another example, during COVID, fantastic kind of bottoms up community collaboration and sharing. Um, you saw. Uh, Researchers in the COVID community provide tools to track the spread of the virus in Docker container images. You saw them share genomic analysis pipelines to share with other medical research communities around the globe, all in the spirit of rapid sharing to try to stay on top of this virus as it was mutating and impacting our planet. Another example of bottoms up open source ethos, if you will, is the open science uh, movement. This is uh, really geared around open source tools and open, open data, what's called. And so citizen scientists are sharing uh, data models to forecast climate change. They're sharing image analysis tools to explore the regions of space. Just fantastic, fantastic creativity. And last, certainly not least, and we can go on with more and more examples, but the mobile and IoT developer communities have also dockerized their tools, their content, for their application platforms including Raspberry Pi and Android. And so community, like, the beauty of this is like we didn't see any of this 10 years ago. right? We had no idea that we would unleash such creative projects and such creative collaboration across the community from the bottoms up. But that's the beauty. That's the beauty of simplifying powerful tech and put it in the hands of millions and just letting them take it wherever their creativity and wherever their innovation, innovative minds go. Just fantastic, very inspiring. So um, we know that Powerful tools are important. Powerful tools and, and providing creative results like we just shared are important for an engineering team's success. We also know culture is really important for an engineering team's success. And that's why I'm really excited about our next guest, Justin Ratcliffe from Fidelity Investments, who's going to share how Fidelity brings these two together. Justin, welcome to DockerCon. Morning, DockerCon. Uh, thank you to Scott and the team for a couple minutes. Uh, here to share and uh, hopefully help to kind of give you a little bit of uh, context going into this event. Uh, we're going to see a lot of new things, a lot of new innovations, and we want to make things reproducible. We want to do cool stuff, uh, but we can't forget certain lessons. So every month there seems to be a new ways via new tools uh, new services, new patterns, new innovations to drive productivity and to make our lives better. Uh, lately, this all seems to be lumped under a new umbrella term, toil. Every organization has their own friction points and some more than others. Um, but we all can see the opportunities and the spaces around us to keep us in flow uh, and to do more while we're in the zone. 
As we implement these patterns or adopt these tools, though, let's keep a lesson you might remember from a movie in mind. <laughs> Eliminating busy work or improving the quality of life for our technologists should be a goal for every organization. Much of the work that will be talked about here at DockerCon will be about reducing that toil. That shouldn't come at the expense of pride and craft or being able to apply the technical knowledge that enable that same automation to a different problem or circumstance. Even when we take these paved paths, we should understand why they are there in the first place, and if required, be able to replicate those same tasks manually. I tend to think of this as leaving a little bit of friction in the system without creating undue frustration. Drawing this line is complicated and very tied to organizational culture. So you will need to try things. Some may work, some may not. Uh, you can hit pause on the ones that don't. But when frustration is hit, spend the time figuring out where it's coming from. Is it because of low value work? Or is it a little bit of discomfort for not knowing some key aspect of the task well enough? We need to spend the time, as much time as possible on why we didn't do a certain action and then write it down. Things will change. So what made it a bad fit before may not be the case forever. Here are a couple other ways to avoid impacting the resiliency of the organization while adopting these patterns. Technologists are by nature creatives. They strive for the hit they get from the successful build, a clean deploy, or maybe hitting some KPI. Uh, if you put all their choices on rails, you may not get, you may get the consistency you want, but the trust in innovation will suffer. Enabling that autonomy within their span of control communicates trust, manages risk, and gives them a pride of ownership in what they create. We also have some rock star technologists that know their specific space incredibly well but they may not be able to apply those same skills laterally. You could say they put all their points into intelligence and leaving too few in the wisdom category on their character sheets. Invite them into knowledge communities. Promote engagement in open source. That can help broaden th their, perspe their perspectives and help them adapt their skills regardless of the circumstances. And finally, figure out ways to connect your technical teams closer to the customers they serve. Organizational reporting structures can increase noise, which makes it harder to get the signal from the direct users. Create transparent, fast feedback loops to expose those same teams to alternate, alternative perspectives on that same problem and improve their decision-making quality. Thank you. All right, all right, man. That's great. That was great. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. So you can see Cruise and Fidelity are far along with their Docker journey with their development organizations. And many in our developer community have asked, like, hey, can you help me get as many of my colleague developers on board as quickly as possible with Docker so we can start building, sharing, and running much, much faster? And we heard you. And so I'm really excited by this next announcement a partnership that I'm going to invite Dixie and Walker to come to the stage and share with you. Dixie, Walker, welcome to DockerCon. Bum. It's great to see everyone here this morning, and we are excited, no thrilled, to announce a partnership between Docker and Udemy. This brings the most desired, most wanted developer tool together with the most popular online education platform for learning how to code. Udemy is one of the largest online educational platforms in the world, with over 213,000 courses available in 75 languages to their 64 million learners. Udemy already hosts over 350 Docker-specific training modules and content from many other developer-relevant publishers, and they were voted the most popular online course provider to learn how to code by Stack Overflow for the second year in a row. 
And expert members of our Docker community already create and deliver amazing content and resources to our developers today. Bringing these two communities together made a lot of sense. Exactly. This partnership between Docker and Udemy will be the first home for Docker accredited content and customized learning paths. These courses and curricula will be vetted by Udemy instructional designers and our community of Docker experts and employees. This partnership will be a fantastic opportunity for all Docker content creators to access the widest possible audience. And in the true spirit of open source, all curricula will be publicly available for all content creators to use. We are so excited about the start and the future of this partnership between two of the best in their class. Please, please feel free to come by to the Udemy booth located on the second floor to talk to us about all of the details. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, everyone. Woo! All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Dixie. Thank you, Walker. Now, we've touched on already today how in the last 10 years, Docker, together with our developer community, has completely changed how development teams build, share, and run modern applications. So what's next? What's the road ahead? As we've shared powerful, uh, simplifying powerful technologies to make it more accessible to more developers is magical, can make magic happen. And we see two powerful technologies, cloud and AI, that could be further simplified, where we could provide a, a, a better developer experience to more devs, and in turn, allow them to be more creative, more innovative, give them time back. Now, tomorrow, we're going to spend on we're going to spend on AI. Today, we're going to spend on cloud. So let's go. So Docker Desktop today is already in the inner loop. That's the loop devs go through multiple times before the commit. It's the, the code, build, test, debug. Code, build, test, debug. Then you do the commit that triggers CI. But as apps have grown in size and complexity, you all are telling us that the local laptop's getting kind of hot. Right, as the container, uh, number of containers grow, as the size of the clusters grow. And so we see room for additional improvements in that local inner loop experience. Specifically four areas. One is the supply chain. Software supply chain has gotten really complex. And giving developers insight into what's going on across the supply chain, how those changes impact what they're working on locally, such that they can make smart decisions proactively as part of their application development process. Second is, Builds can still take too long. As fast as the modern laptops are, you can still be waiting minutes, if not hours. Second is, the local file system is still too slow for some applications, for some stacks, and some use cases. And finally, debugging can still be really complex. Debugging in a container, in particular, can be complex. And so wouldn't it be cool if Docker could address these challenges for developers and give you time back? We think so. And so let's kick things off by sharing how we're going to help developers with the software supply chain. Christian, Amy, welcome to DockerCon. All right, thanks, SJ. Uh, reflecting back on the last 10 years, Docker has been an integral part of your software supply chain. Starting with content, over 100 billion pulls from Docker Hub last year. Docker trusted content, which consists of Docker official images, Docker verified publishers, and Docker sponsored open source is the most widely used library of open source assets. Docker official images follow best practices for quality and security and are maintained by Docker. They're checked every four hours for new upstream versions. Docker build creates images with a software build of materials, SBOMs, and provenance data for you using BuildKit, providing visibility into where your images are coming from, how they were built, and what's inside, enabling traceability across the supply chain. Docker Desktop has been helping you pool and manage images securely with capabilities like enhanced container isolation and image access management. In short, Docker has been making it easier for developers like you to build and ship secure apps. This isn't enough. You, the developers, deserve a better, more enjoyable experience. Everything you are asked to do around the software supply chain is an extra step that's rarely planned. It takes time away from doing the things that you love to do, building and innovating. Did you know, on average, a dev loses at least one day per month working on software supply chain issues? 
you also then have to make sense of all the security noise. Sometimes it's too much information and there are too many signals to chase. Other times it's caught way too late. How many times are you still left after that with questions like, what's this random CVE mean? Is this even impacting our software? Why can't I use this license? Sound familiar at all? Then, when it's relevant and needs a fix, this still isn't the work that you love to do, the work that makes you love your job. It's repetitive work that should just be handled. At Docker, we believe there should be a better developer experience. So we've created Docker Scout to make the software supply chain simpler, bringing you actionable insights where you need them. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how Docker Scout helps you. Starting with trusted content, Docker has been there for you and will continue to be there for you. And now we're making content even more secure with signed SBOMs and attestations that are verifiable. And then with image analysis and comparison, Docker Scout provides you with the right level of information where and when you need it in Docker Desktop, the CLI, Docker Hub, in your CI, and even more. But that's not all. With guided remediations, we're taking the guesswork out of what to do next and putting those suggestions into action automatically based on your organization's preferences. Speaking of organizational preferences, Docker Scout has policy evaluation. You and your organization can now align on best practices and improve your overall security posture. We have out-of-the-box policies to get you started, and we'll have additional policies, including configurable ones, in the coming months. And you should know that our take on policy evaluation isn't just pass or fail. We don't want to block your builds. So we support incremental positive change as well. And last but not least, Scout comes with many integrations. So we have JFrog Artifactory, ECR, GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, and Sysdig. If you use other security tools like SonarCube, Gripe, Trivi, we can support those too. With these and more integrations on the way, we are expanding the insights that Docker Sprout brings to developers. So now why don't we take a few minutes to learn how Stuart Powell, an engineering manager from JW Player, has been using Scout and how it's helped their team. All right, welcome, Stuart. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. Good morning, everyone. It is truly my pleasure to be with you all today to tell you about how JW Player has been able to realize not only its compliance goals, but also remain true to some of our most important values as an engineering org with Docker Scout. My name is Stuart Powell, and I'm the engineering manager for the DevOps team at JW Player. I also happen to be a pretty darn big fan of the Kubernetes and container ecosystems and will absolutely respond to my nickname, Stubernetes. Let, let me tell you a little bit about JW Player. JW Player is the world's number one platform for video-driven companies. We help our customers drive monetization, engagement, and views. In fact, we've helped our customers stream more than 860 billion videos and counting. All of this happens on top of a fleet of multiple Kubernetes clusters spanning thousands of nodes, thousands of containers, multiple services, and more than 300 repositories, all in Docker Hub, all currently running Docker Scout. Earlier this year, JW Player set out with a goal of implementing a comprehensive image vulnerability management program, as well as a software supply chain that wouldn't require us to compromise on some of our most important values as an engineering org. Specifically, we've done a lot of work to empower our development teams to retain full ownership of their build and release pipelines from dev all the way through to production multiple times a day. This represented a real challenge for my team when we started thinking about how to integrate software supply chain in a number of different build and release pipelines without overburdening the DevOps team in the process. With Docker Scout, we were able to go into Docker Hub, check a box, and with virtually no effort from my team whatsoever, we're able to provide developers with a comprehensive software supply chain and image vulnerability management program with no effort. In fact, it was so easy, we didn't have to wait weeks or months for development teams to go and update their deployment pipelines. We were able to get more than 300 repositories running on our first day using the product, 
in under an hour. Secondly, at GW Player, we believe that offering our entire engineering org a single pane of glass, providing a comprehensive overview about the state of our security posture, is critical for fostering transparency and accountability, and Scout makes this really easy. The last thing that we did not want to compromise on was the fact that we felt that shared responsibility was crucial to the success of any overall security program. With Scout, we've enabled our developers to choose their level of engagement with the security program, offering the developers who are interested near real-time feedback about the health and security of their containers. But we've also, through that single pane of glass, provided our security team an overview uh, that allows them to prioritize and choose areas for remediation. All of this works essentially out of the box. We've been really happy with Docker Scout. It's allowed us to realize our compliance goals. It's been incredibly easy to use. I'm really pleased to have been able to talk to you this morning about how great the product is. You should all check it out. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Thank you Stuart. Thanks. That was really exciting to hear from a customer reusing your product that you've built over the last uh, few months and, in fact, even years. What I've, what I've been here what I'm going to try to do for the next few minutes is to demo Docker Scout, refer to some of the things that Stuart just highlighted in this portion, and really kind of hone in on two of the main concepts of Docker Scout, integrations and policy. Integrations are a means for you to connect your supply chain tools and bring data into the platform so that with policy, you can really codify your quality standards across your organization and help developers, and keep that in mind, that is the number one goal for Docker Scout. We want to enable the developer to be more productive in the inner loop, working on their laptop to produce more, better, more secure software faster with less effort. For that, let me start with um, integrations. So this is the scout.com uh, website. This is our integration catalog, and just get, let me skim through with some of them. Amy has alluded to most of them already. Container registries, continuous integration is supported. Interestingly, what we feel is really, really key to Docker Scout and the, its ability to reduce the cognitive overload for developers is its integrations with deployment environments. So knowing what is running where is really key. And we support this, for example, with Sysdig, which I'll show you in a little bit in, in our demo. We are working with source code management systems to start doing automated remediation for things that you want your developers to not have to care about, but get done automatically. We can integrate with existing CVE scanners, and they help us. Like you, you can augment the, the CVE reports that Scout is already providing if you're using them. And lastly, code quality. This is all about like bringing in quality gates from something like SonarCube, code, qual uh, code quality um, aspects into the supply chain data, making it accessible to your developers. So let's take a quick look at what it means to kind of like work with integrations on Docker Scout. So this is our image overview. And you can see a lot of images, a lot of CVEs, and policy results being found here. And let me select an environment. So this is going to bring in information of which image is running in which environment. And you can already see how this has reduced the information that you as a developer need to consume. Those images are the ones that are currently running in production. And those are the ones that you can like, focus on now. And of course, Scout wouldn't be a Docker product if we wouldn't have a presence in the inner loop, right? That's really where developers like to work. And this is our CVE command in the Scout CLI as part of Docker Desktop. And what I want to show you here is, this is not just a command that lists your CVEs, as you may have seen elsewhere. This is a command that in this particular instance, is correlating results data from six different integrations. Docker Hub, GitHub for Git provenance, CVE data streams, of course, from Alpine, Git. We have build kit data here with like provenance. You see exactly which layer brought in which particular package. And more importantly, you see runtime information here via VEX coming in from, in this case, Sysdig, which packages are loaded at runtime. So very good for your developers to see what to focus on. But supply chain security is not just about CVEs and packages. There's a lot more. And that's where policy comes in. Policy is a way for you, as Amy said, to, to codify your organizational quality standards. And let me just highlight and show you some of the policies that we have out of the box. This is a base image update policy, asking your developers to keep your, up, your base images update, uh, 
up to date at all times. So these images are not um, within policy, meaning they are, have, they are using an outdated base image. And I can go all the way down to getting actionable remediation here. I'm on 314 of Alpine, and I should really go on 318. Now, again, switching back over to um, the CLI. Of course, we have a policy command that gives you the same level of detail for local images that you haven't even pushed into the registry, that haven't, haven't it even made into your CI pipeline. But you can still get the same results, the same insights into your inner loop. So you see things like vulnerabilities, of course. You see the SonarCube quality gates coming out of GitHub, coming out of SonarCube. And I also added a, a, an attestation policy that we want people to use provenance and S-bombs in the future. As Amy said, we want them signed. So you get these policies here as well. And lastly, I'm particularly really excited about the ability to compare things. Again, there is a status quo in your organization. You're running images in production. What really matters is what you are doing in, in your inner loop when working on applications. How is that affecting your quality? Um, of images that you're going to be pushing into Git, into CI. We have the analyzed image. This is the image that I've worked on locally, and the one running in production on the right. And you can already see this had, my work has greatly improved um, the security posture. I updated the base image, fixed all the vulnerabilities, and I get immediate feedback, again, in the inner loop about what this did to my policy across these two images. And with that, I'm handing it back to Amy. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you, Christian. With the addition of Docker Scout to the Docker portfolio, Docker is expanding across the entire supply chain to meet developers where they are. With the same simplicity and enjoyment we've delivered over the last 10 years. And with that, I'm excited to announce that Docker Scout is now generally available as Docker continues to invest in helping developers. If you want to get started today, check out our quick start guide, and then you can get off and running with Scout. Thank you, everyone. Come watch our sessions right. later. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Nice job. Docker Scout GA, come on, give it up. Docker Scout GA. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Christian. And so right there, we hope you see what's coming, right? The best of cloud, best of local. Scout uses the cloud to integrate across the software supply chain, to consume metadata, to assess it and put it in context, and then locally, brings that context down to the developer for the image that they're working on right then and there. So they're not showered with erroneous alerts or irrelevant information. They get the information they need, the right information at the right time to take the right action. Fantastic example. All right, uh, you can see we're excited about this, right? We got another uh, way to help you speed up your inner loop, and this is going to be at the build stage. And to share more, really excited to welcome Matt Wilson to the stage. Matt. Hey everyone, I'm Matt. I work at Product at Docker. I'm excited to preview a new product for you all today, our next-gen Docker build. We know builds can take way too long sometimes. We're breaking the developer flow, and they're becoming more and more constrained by their local machine. Actually, research tells us developers can spend an average an hour a day waiting for their builds to complete. On top of that, the build has got even more complex because of multiple machine architectures across developer teams. And that experience is an isolated and repeated experience for every developer across a team or an organization. Should we have a look about how we're making it better? So here, we've got our next-gen Docker build, and it's building the Docker CLI versus the local builder. We've not got no images stored. It's building, and it's fast. It's done. Just under five seconds, what would have previously taken 40. And we've made it seamlessly integrated with Docker Desktop and works with your favorite commands like build and compose. Even there's no change to your workflow. We've provided a way to connect what you do locally with the cloud, ultimately to speed up your builds. Taking that build off your machine removes any local limitation and helps teammates get the benefit of a shared cache, allowing more time developing and less time waiting for builds to finish. Not only that, we've also taken the Docker desktop UI and provided a new collaborative view of your builds, bringing you one destination on your laptop to see your builds, your team's builds, and your CI, making it easier to share and debug. How fast? 
with our next-gen Docker build, we're seeing Docker images build up to 39 times faster. In this example, it's building Mastodon for multi-architecture. That was taking two hours and 25 minutes. That now takes three minutes and 40 seconds. That's two and a half hours down to three and a half minutes. Don't take my word for it, though. So internally, we've been using it, our next-gen builds, to reduce the time the team who spend building when releasing Docker Desktop. Before, each team member would have to wait 15 minutes for that initial build. Across that team, that's two and a half hours. We've offloaded the builds from the developer machine. They can continue working. They can kick off multiple builds with zero impact on their machine resources. The team shares a builder in a cache, meaning they never need to build the same step or image twice, reducing that 15 minutes per developer down to an average of just 20 seconds per developer. For us, that's two and a half hours across the team, down to just three and a half minutes. It's actually led one of our engineers to say, now they have it, they won't go back, which is pretty cool. What we're trying to do here, if you want to experience the same impact we'd have had Docker, we're making it faster, expanding it, making it collaborative. We're getting our build time down from two and a half hours down to three and a half minutes. We're speeding up builds. We're removing the constraints on our machines and enabling a shared crash to increase your collaboration. You can site scan the QR code. You can go to docker.com forward slash build dash early dash access dash program to sign up to our limited early preview program. And we really look forward to you trying out. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Cheers. Fantastic. Next gen Docker build. Who needs an hour back in their day? Who would like an hour back in their day, right? Right? Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So we've got two more inner loop improvements to share, optimizations to help you go faster in that inner loop. One is around local file system performance. A second is around reducing the complexity of debugging. To share more, please join me in welcoming Webb Stevens to the stage. Webb. Thanks, Scott. Hello. It's so great to be with all of you here today. And thank you all for being part of the Docker journey so far and coming to DockerCon 2023. I'm Webb. I'm the GM of Docker Desktop. And it's really, honestly, my privilege to approach every day, to wake up every day obsessing about our developers and how we can actually go about improving the developer experience across all of our products and services for all of our customers. It was really amazing to see what's next for our next gen build. All of the amazing speed that it's bringing to you for new lightning fast builds. But that isn't the only place we're providing massive imp improvements in our performance. Compared to even just this summer, with our integration of Virtual IFS, we've decreased the, the Docker desktop file, or we've increased the Docker desktop file sharing speed by more than 7x. So that means, in the Cruise example, for the Redis build that they were doing, those build times are now reduced by more than 71%. And that's before all of the amazing capabilities that we just saw from the next generation build that Matt was just talking about. But we're not done investing in this functionality. We want to continue to make those massive improvements. And so in the coming months, we are completing the integration of Mutagen into Docker Desktop. This enables file syncing taking full advantage of the native Linux file system performance and combining that with a simple UI inside of Docker Desktop. And the results? We'll be seeing speeds of up to 17x faster in just the coming months, a metric that we're proud to have achieved and get the chance to share with you very soon. But it's not just the performance improvements that we're making. We're continuing to invest in making Docker Desktop the launch pad across your entire journey in Dockerized app development. We're doubling down on actually enabling new features, products, and services that will help you be more productive within your interloop development, streamlining activities from first run to testing and debugging your Dockerized apps. So we know that developers can spend as much as 60% of their time debugging their applications. But the reality is that you actually don't spend most of your time doing debug. Right? You're spending most of your time sorting through the configuration of tools, figuring out the setup, instead of all of those things, of actually doing the debug work you want to do. So today, when you actually want to go debug, frequently, all you can access is running containers. And all you have access to in that running containers is a really simple console for debugging. But what if you run into a scenario where the container crashes or never even starts? 
What if you need to do something more than a simple console or Docker exec command allows? Not to mention that scenario of debugging a crash container is difficult, if not nearly impossible today. One of our newest uh, experimental features is the Docker debug. And that's going to enable you to actually do debugging that was previously challenging, if not impossible. Now, I know it sounds pretty compelling, but instead of me telling you about it, I'd rather have someone show you. So let me hand this over to Ivan, bring him up on stage, our Docker debug expert, uh, and we can talk about how we can spice things up and kick up your experience a notch. Ivan? Thank you, Webb. Thank so you. I, so Ivan, while, while they're getting the laptop set up, in your own words, Tell me what Docker Debug is for you and for everybody else that's out here today. So Docker Debug is, is a toolbox that we have created to simplify how to debug applications in containers. And, and you were kind of given, we were talking to media a couple days ago, you were giving this analogy of it's like cooking in somebody else's kitchen. Can you explain that to everybody? I thought that was interesting. Yeah, sure. So like, I'm very, I'm very good at cooking at home. You know, like, have my kitchen, my nice, my oven. The issue is when I have to, kick, to cook this meal somewhere else, like in your kitchen. In my kitchen? Yes. I start missing my knives. My oven and your oven are not the same. And the secret ingredient, it's always missing. It's in my house, sorry. OK. And this is kind of like the Docker debug. Exactly. Because Docker debug, what allows you is to bring all the tools that you need into the, into the container. So all of a sudden, you have your container and all the tools. Why don't we dive in and show everybody how you can get access to this? Sure. Let me show you. So we're going to jump into Docker, Docker Desktop into the exception market, marketplace. We search for the back. And we have the extension here. You can install it. In my case, it's installed, so I'm just going to open it. And here we are. Now, the extension is installing all the components that you need to debug. Debugging does not happen in the extension. Now that's installing in the shell here, is that right? Yes, this is installing all the things that you, that you need to do. Magic does not happen in the, contain, uh, in, the, in the extension. In the extension, got it. OK, so we've got this installed. Show us what this would look like if we didn't have Docker debug you know, in today's environment. So for example, we have here an NGINX running. And we have a website, it's slightly not right. Let's try to fix it. So I'm OK see. with DockerCon love. That's all right. <laughs> Little bit of love, please. So what we will do is to go and exec into the container. right? So exec in the container and then try to modify this file. You've got no autocomplete in this, right? No. Someone with dyslexia like me? No way, no. Nginx. Let's see. Well, index HTML. Not big. Let me try nano. No nano. MX. What what about HTOP? HTOP? I know you don't like Emacs. No HTOP. Can we ping? I would like to. No ping. Sad. That's pretty sad. It is right. It is like it, this is a frustration that we usually have when we try to debug applications in containers. It's just not about application, it's about all the friction the container creates. So let me show you. Okay, what do we have now? Let me show you Docker debug. Shell uh, DockerCon. Here we are. Okay, now wait, wait. So what's what's all this built in command stuff that just installed here? Yeah, one of, one of the objectives with Docker Debug is simplify the job of a, de a developer, right? So what we thought is it would be good to have this, this function that you can install any tool with one command across all the different distros. Wait, wait, so I get to bring my knives, all the tools I want, et cetera, from my kitchen, the way I've got my oven configured. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing that with a base image that's Red Hat or Ubuntu or Alpine. That is correct, because in installing these tools, it's possible, but you need to know, right? Like, it's different to do it in Red Hat, do it in Ubuntu and Alpine, and so on. Now, we just reduce that friction. OK, you want to change this website. Let's see if we can do it here now. Let's do it. So let me copy and paste. I'm not very good at typing. And let's modify this. And let's go back to the website. 
Boom. There you go. There you go. Boom. Just like that. Thank you. Wow, so that's, that's pretty impressive. The original container is totally left as is. We didn't have to load a bunch of stuff into it. That's, that's correct. Like, if we go back to the container, and I try to do the same thing, like, like ping Google. No, oh, we didn't ping Google with, with DLD. Let's try it. There, there you go. Right? So, so now we are left with the, the container unmolested. It's staying smaller. Your images are staying smaller and staying secure by default. Docker debug is doing all of the heavy lifting. Right? We, can, we can also now debug images inside of broken com containers, doing remote debugging, and soon... Kubernetes. Soon Kubernetes. Ivan, thank you so much. Thank really you. really appreciate you being out here. So we are just getting started with Docker debug. I've got two different things that you can do today as you leave the keynote. Uh, one, if you want to learn more about the desktop, uh, the, the Docker debug, you can actually take this, the, one of the actions, if you want to learn more about that, the Docker debug session is actually tomorrow. Thank goodness it's up there, Thursday, October 5th for me. So sign up for that if you want to learn more, or you can go and download the extension. Two, if you want to get on the wait list for early access to Mutagen, the file syncing that's easily integrated into Docker Desktop, you can sign up for the wait list for the Docker Desktop preview program with the QR code here. Overall, we have been busy reducing the friction and the frustration for all of you, and in some cases, actually, making things that were not just challenging easy, but making things that were previously nearly impossible now actually possible. That's it for me. Back to you, Scott. Thank you, Webb. Thank you, Webb. Wasn't that cool? I want to spend more time debugging. Said no developer ever, right? <laughs> Docker debug is for you. So we just seen a sneak peek of what's ahead for improving the developer experience for the inner loop. And you can see that we're making improvements in the supply chain, in the build experience, in file system performance, as well as reducing the complexity of debugging. And our vision for the road ahead is not local or cloud. It's local and cloud, the best of local, the best of cloud together to provide a fantastic developer experience. So please, download the products, sign up for the early access, go to the booths, check them out. We can't wait to hear from you and hear your feedback. And so to wrap, we're going to end with where we began, which is the Docker developer community. Now, the Docker developer community is one of the very special aspects of Docker. We've got more than 60 Docker captains around the world, more than 170 Docker community leaders. And these leaders put together content and meetups and YouTube and webinars that touch more than 5 million developers every year. And so every year at DockerCon, we want to recognize those who have gone above and beyond in serving our community. And we do this based on the community members' feedback. We listen to them in terms of who is contributing quality content, who is contributing consistently and frequently. And are they carriers of the Docker developer community culture? Are they positive? Are they smart? Are they welcoming? Are they responsive? And are they trying to make our community better? So we have so many fantastic contributors throughout the community. Every year, this is incredibly difficult. And this year was particularly difficult. So we couldn't choose one. We chose three. And I'm really grateful all three are here today. So the three of you, when you hear your names, please stand up. And I'd like us all to give it up for James Spurin, Ahili Vacher, and Francesco Chula. There they are. Thank you. Give it up. Give it a half of his hat. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the Docker captains and the Docker community leaders. The community wouldn't work without you. All right. So that's a wrap. We want to thank you for helping us kick off the conference. Let's go build, share, and run together and have a great DockerCon. Thank you. Thank you.